Now, you may have had a difficult week. You may have had a difficult few months. But I bet it isn't as bad as the time they've just had at Google. Have you heard what's happened to Google? What a story. My gosh. Blunders with Google's AI chatbot have wiped off 82 billion pounds from the company's value. So that's a chatbot that went wrong and it cost the company £82 billion. Pounds. The chatbot is a rival to the one we're always talking about these days, ChatGPT. We've talked about that on the show lots recently. It's a really big deal because if you say, write me a sonnet in my own voice, it will do it. If you say, write me a song like for Maurice Chevalier, and they, it'll do that. If you say, I, I want to do some hip hop. If you want to say, give me some garage, they'll do that. It's, an, it's a heck of a thing, this ChatGPT. And people keep thinking it's going to mean that children will never, ever again do their homework because they won't need to. Chat GPT will do it for them. Nobody will ever write a wedding speech again because Chat GPT will do it for them. And as for Valentine's coming up next week, although I don't suppose I'll get one this year, will I? Oh no. Oh dear. Whoops. Um, well anyway, when Valentine comes up, you won't have to bother thinking of something mushy and smushy to put in your Valentine's card. You just get old Chat GPT to do it for you. So what went so terribly wrong at Google? Let us ask tech expert Guy Cocker. Hey Guy, good evening. Hello. Good evening, Vanessa. I'll send you. I'll send you a Valentine. Will you? Generator, oh, but. good, 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 good. <laughs> tell me, tell me about what went wrong. I mean, the headline is it's just brilliant. An astronomical loss. Chatbots blunder costs Google eighty-two billion pounds. So those of us who aren't very techy will need you to explain what on earth has happened to cost eighty-two billion. It's huge. Yeah, so, so basically on the tech war, Google and Microsoft are, are getting set up for sort of the next generation of search. So Google's so successful, it's responsible for about 91, 93% of searches worldwide that it's basically the verb, you know, I will Google that, yes. you know, rather yes. than searching. But the next, the, the tech experts, such as myself and, and industry analysts, um, believe that the next the next battle of the online search engine is actually, and Microsoft has, has said this as well, that it's going to move from a, from a search engine to something of an, of an answer engine. So you ask it a question and a natural language response will come back rather than here are 10 results. And it, the idea, I think, will be that you'll be on more of a journey. You'll have, again, this is how Microsoft has described it, a sort of co-pilot with you when you're using your, your next mobile phone or the next iteration of uh, whatever search engine you're using. Yeah. And so Microsoft's been doing a phenomenal job on the PR front. They invested in a San Francisco-based company called G uh, OpenAI, who run ChatGPT, which you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And um, it was it, basically they're winning the PR war. A lot of a lot of tech analysts are thinking that Microsoft is on the cutting edge of this just because they're doing a great job of it. And they've said that the next version of their Bing search engine will allow you to go on these sort of AI-driven journeys. And that's the, so so for the first time in forever, really, the momentum is with Microsoft and its search engine Bing, mm. uh, which represents about 3% of the market. Google this week tried to play catch up and tried to show actually we're the AI innovators. And unfortunately, it got a very simple question wrong in its press demo, as these things often go, go wrong. And this was a subject, it, this was a question about astronomy. Yeah, and it was so a question that didn't need any sort of subjective interpretation. It's just a question where there are there is a factual answer and you've got to answer it correctly. So what actually happened? Just tell us what the question is. Obviously, we probably, most of us won't know what the right answer is, so you better tell us that too. Right. So it was it was it was a question about the James Webb Space Telescope, um, which itself cost ten billion to make. But it's as you said at the beginning, uh, it wiped a hundred billion essentially off of Google's share price. They're still over a trillion dollar company, so they're nothing to worry about really. But um, basically, the 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 Google equivalent of this AI, which is called Bard. Um, as in B-A-R-D, as in Shakespeare, as in the Bard, um, it said that it, uh, it that, that 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 telescope took the first pictures of a planet outside of our solar system, and a lot of scientists, astrologers, people who are interested in this stuff on Twitter were very quick to to say that's actually that's wrong. You've not got that right here, and that was the reason that the share price went down. And it's basically just one of those embarrassing demos that, that you know it can go wrong. And actually, Microsoft has also said you know you shouldn't be relying on this stuff. You should be checking over it because it can be um, it can be factually incorrect. It can get stuff wrong, and it's mm. not meant to be definitive. So what, what why do, why was it though that this was such a terrible own goal? Because you might have thought that lots of questions were being asked of this AI contraption. You know, it got most of them right. Just 
just one of them wrong. It's all teething problems anyway. It's just, you know, it's kind of a bit of showboating, grandstanding. Anything can go wrong at a product launch anyway and often does. So why does it wipe not just a few quid, but £82 billion off the value of Google? It's an absolutely catastrophic error, this. Not just a, a mere mistake. It's kind of akin to Gerald Ratner's prawn sandwich, isn't it? Wiping the company out. Yeah, it's, it's because it's, it's you know, Google has seen, Google's invested in AI for a long time. In 2017, the CEO said, you know, the next version of the, the, the battleground for online will be not just mobile, but it'd be AI driven. So they've been seen as driving this for a long time. And it's just they've allowed Microsoft to just gain ground very quickly in this mm -hmm. area. And it just shows that they're not quite at the cutting edge of it anymore. You know, Google's got a British company called DeepMind, which has been on the forefront of AI for over a decade. They're actually really good at this stuff. There was a famous story, I think a couple of years ago, of an, AI, of an engineer at Google being so impressed with its AI that it actually thought he quit because he thought it was becoming sentient and it was going to be like Skynet from the Terminator. And wow. so they're actually really good with this stuff. It's just that they messed up this demo and, and that that can happen. I think that the the really, I'm sure a lot of your, um, your viewers and, and listeners have, have used ChatGPT. It's really impressive. But what, it's, what it actually does is it, it, it absorbs billions and billions of words from books and you know, libraries from around the world, mm. and it gives you what it thinks is the most accurate answer. But because it's that is such a task and such a processing task, it will get that stuff wrong. It will get better over time, and we're still at the very early stages of this technology. But it's clear what the, the example that Microsoft gave is you know, what. When you start a search, what's easier to learn? Is it the guitar or the piano? Mm. Now, I don't know the answer to that. But when you're on a future journey through, through on, in the online space, that answer will then go, you know, it will give you the answer to that. And then it will then suggest to you, here's a video, you know, here's the first song that you should learn. And then it might suggest you a local tutor or a guitar or a piano to buy. Obviously, that's where the real money is in getting you to buy stuff. It's, that's never going to change online. But um, it's just such a valuable next step in online in, in the way that we all use the internet. Talk really. to me you, you, about ChatGPT. Obviously, to a certain generation, they're talking about it all the time now. They're using it. They think it's fun. They think it's helpful. Maybe they don't take it all that seriously yet, but they realise they pretty soon will. To lots of other people listening and watching this programme now, particularly older people, I don't know what the, what the demarcation, let's say over 35, let's just say, they honestly have never heard of ChatGPT. They can't imagine what it's supposed to do or how it would do it or how it would come to play a part in their lives. So talk us through, if you wouldn't mind, what it's doing now for the people who are familiar with it and are using it, A, how seriously they're taking it or whether it's just for fun, really, saying, you know, write me a song in the style of Bob Dylan and then you read it and you think, oh, God, that's absolutely rotten and absolutely terrible, it's rubbish, and you have a good laugh, or whether it's more serious than that. And then scroll forward, I don't know, maybe 18 months or a bit longer, how everybody might find themselves using something like this. So there's a public demo that's been um, launched for ChatGPT. So you can go and find it online. A lot of the time when I try and use it, it's it's so busy that you can't actually get on and use it. It's yeah. been so popular. It's millions of people use it. But you're right, it can be quite difficult for, for some people to try and wrap their head around. But the, some of the examples that you've given already, I think, are the, are the best examples. So, you know, say I'm a student and I'm writing a paper on the, you know, the American presidents or the, you know, the history of politics yeah. in the UK. And, and I, I can get it to, to write something for me however long I want. I could say, you know, write me a thousand words, write me 10,000 words. And again, it will go through previously written work from humans and it will try and give you the best answer that it can mm. um, on, on that particular topic. So that's a danger, obviously, if you're in school, you get all these uh, students who are, you know, <laughs> ripping off other, other people's work for their, uh, for their essay. Yes. But as you, as you take that further, you know, you can get really, really specific on stuff. And, and for journalists like myself, you could, I, I could ask it to write a tech review in the style of, of Guy Cocker. I could get it to write um, a, an intro to, to one of your segments, Vanessa, in yes. the style of Vanessa Phelps. God, I wish you could. Me. We'd love that. How do we and do? Can would... we really do that? We should do. Mark, we should do that. We should do an intro in the style of Vanessa Phelps, whatever that may possibly be, and then I should read it and see if it really is, or, re or or if it really isn't, because I mean, it would save us a great deal, a great deal of effort. I want me to be as creative and voluble and as eloquent, as entertaining, as unexpectedly unpredictable as I am on a daily basis. Let old Chat GPT take the strain. Why not? I don't mind. Be great. 
I don't want to do your uh, your research team and your produ- production team out of the job, <laughs> but it, but it is it, and you would probably it would write something for you, Vanessa, and you'd probably go, "That's not actually quite in my tone of voice," or yeah. you know, and that's the thing at the moment. You'd want to you'd want to tweak it slightly so that it is more accurate, but it's it just feels. I think for for a lot of people, it feels that like that leap forward. Mm. You know, first time you get in an electric car or the first time you used a smartphone, it feels that kind of leap forward. Yeah, and it's got its problems as Google found out, but it's it's really important. Is it expensive or is it free or, or is, what kind of a? How do you sort of hook into a tool like that? It's it's free, yeah. So yeah. so this company is um, is is called OpenAI, and they're they're based in San Francisco. Microsoft hasn't disclosed how much money they've invested billions uh, into the company, um, and that's whose technology they're going to be using in the next version of um, uh, of Bing, which is its search engine. It's probably going to be integrated into Office as well, which which I'm using at the moment. And you can imagine the the future. You you asked before what, where it's going to go. You know, if I'm writing, let's say, a, a job application, or I'm writing an essay on a particular subject. I don't know if you remember uh, there used to be an assistant called Clippy in in office and a I lot do. of people are sort of making jokes about this is just Clippy version 2 mm. but you know you would you would have in the sidebar it saying probably it looks like you're writing a job application or it looks like you're writing an essay on a particular subject mm. would you like would you a like me to help you with this and 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 provide some some writing that you can use, mm. um, or it could be used the other way and it could help to pre-see, You know, if you've got a long document that you're trying to absorb at work, it might be able to give you a, a, a top level summary of it, which will make it easier to digest. But um, yeah, it's kind of scary. You know, will, will anyone you know end up writing anything anymore? You know, will we have to stop written tests in schools so that we can prove that the student actually knows? You know, like more of an oral exam. Um, to to prove that they know the subject, but um, yeah, I think that's the that's the logical. Cons- so conclusion. in your in your own head and heart, and you are you know our tech expert guy Cocker, that's what you know about. Do you fear what the repercussions will be of ChatGPT getting better and better at what it does, more and more sophisticated, more subtle, more nuanced, just more accomplished? So when we say write a uh, song in the in the style of, of of Nat King Cole, it really does sound like a song that Nat King Cole really could have sung, and it really is convincing. When that happens, do you think that's good or bad? Do you worry about this, or do you think it's essentially a, a good thing and a useful tool for us? I think two things will happen. I think I think one, the direction of uh, what, what I was saying about your intros or things that do follow a certain pattern could be a, a news story. And there are already publications that are using this technology um, to produce things like news stories that then have a human editor mm-hmm. check them over because that's obviously really important. They need to be factually accurate. But in theory, the AI can help write those stories really quickly. When it comes to artistic endeavours like music, like, like lyrics, like uh, like creative writing, I, I feel and I, I feel quite strongly that you know you you can tell the difference at this point in time that you know something that's created by a human. Um, there's the, there's a the whole sort of infinite monkey typewriter will will produce you know the works of Shakespeare theory, but I think that it will actually drive people who want quality content, who want quality, to actually you know seek out humans who who have that tone of voice and have that authority. And and I don't think that AI is going to replace that anytime soon, at least within my life. Time, but well, obviously I'm, I'm open to the possibility. Well, yeah. you look you look hale and hearty, and I hope you live to be at least 120. So I hope that's a long, long time. Guy, thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Lovely to have you on the show, and I'll be straight back with you after this break. 